Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Environmental Sciences, video 27. It's on energy reduction. Humans on the planet use 17.7 .7 terawatts or trillion watts of energy every year. That's a huge number. It's equivalent to the amount of energy produced on the planet through radioactive decay in the core of the planet. So it's a lot of energy, and most of it is coming from fossil fuels, from oil, coal, and natural gas, just a little bit from renewable energy. And most of that is going to be hydroelectric power and general biomass. And so there's a debate on should we use solar, wind, geothermal. Well, that's not a good conversation to have yet. What we should really start with is let's reduce the size of that pie. If we can reduce the amount of energy that we're dealing with, that's better than all of those other choices combined. And so the two ways we can reduce is through conservation and efficiency. So if we look at a car, what would energy conservation be? Don't use the car. You should walk or you should take a bike or mass transit. We also have energy efficiency. What does that mean? Let's increase the miles per gallon of that car and maybe make it a hybrid vehicle so we can use more uh, less fossil fuels that way. And so we can look at energy reduction on the large scale, all the way down to the small scale. If we're looking at electricity that's generated, a lot of it is going to be during peak times of the day, so during the middle of the day. So how do we reduce that? Well, the power company knows this, and so what they do is they have a tiered system where they charge you more the more electricity that you use to disincentivize you from using so much electricity. And they can also use variable pricing. So they can charge you more during the middle of the day and they can hope to push you kind of into off-peak hours. What can we do? Well, we've got energy conservation and efficiency. Energy conservation is when we're using less of the energy services. And then energy efficiency is when we're using less energy for those services. So there's a subtle difference between the two. And so let me give you some examples of that. So if we're dealing with your house, energy conservation could be turning down the thermostat. So removing the amount of heat that we're having and putting on a jacket. What would be an example of energy efficiency? Maybe using more efficient light bulbs in your house. So we're still getting the same amount of light, but we're just using more energy, less energy for it. If we're looking at transportation, you could walk or bike. If we're looking at efficiency maybe get a hybrid vehicle if we're looking at technology use a laptop not a desktop it's going to use less energy what about efficiency use energy star um, technologies. Those are going to be ones that use less energy uh, for a given amount of energy services. And the best way to do it is to design better, make homes sustainable. And so we can do that by orienting them the correct way using passive heating and then using the heat inside the house and holding it inside the house. And so if we look at energy demands, it's going to be variable throughout the day. So during the middle of the day, we're going to be using more energy than we do at nighttime. And so how can we deal with this? We can use a tiered system so we can charge people the more energy they use. So that incentivizes them to do conservation and efficiency. And then we can also use variable pricing. So make it cheaper to use energy in the middle of the night than during the time of the day, the middle of the day, so we can kind of push people to those off-peak hours. But the two-pronged attack is this whole idea of conservation and efficiency. And we really do live in an energy society with energy services. Conservation use less, efficiency use less energy for the same services and so examples in your house energy conservation turn down the thermostat take a shorter shower efficiency use better light bulbs if we're looking at transportation walk or bike use mass transit if we're looking at efficiency get a more efficient car. If we're looking at technology, unplug your laptop right now. If it's, un if it's plugged in and doesn't have to be charging, you're using more energy. And don't even use a desktop, use a laptop or use a device that uses less energy. When we're looking at efficiency, use an Energy Star appliance. Those are gonna be ones that have a decrease 20 to 30% in the amount of energy that they're actually using. Now the government can have an effect on this as well. And so during the, the huge energy crises of the 1970s, they wanted to increase gas mileage on cars because we didn't have enough gasoline. And so they instituted the CAFE standards or the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Standards. And so you can see what they did is they said, the fleet of cars, so if you're Ford, for example, the average car has to move its gas mileage up to around 25 miles per gallon. And so industry did that but it's remained static this whole time. And more recently, we have new CAFE standards that said by the year 2016, the average has to be 35. And so the corporations will hit that. And by 2025, it's supposed to be 55. 
And so what we can do is we can have higher standards and that causes corporations to create more efficient vehicles. The easiest way to do it with the least amount of inconvenience, however, is not getting new fuels or it's not conserving, it's not becoming more efficient. The easiest way with the least amount of inconvenience is just designing appropriately. So your house is a great place to start. So if we're looking at your house, we should orient your house when it's built so it's facing south so we can get a huge amount of energy from the sun. That's passive energy. And we want to build it so that we're not getting a huge amount of energy coming in during the summer summer, but we're getting more energy, especially in the northern climates during the winter. And then we want to maintain that energy on the inside, so getting really good insulation. These are all things that we can do. You don't even have to think about it when you walk in your energy efficient house. It's just designed in a way that it's going to consume less energy or reduce the amount of energy that you're using. So to reduce peak demand, we could use a tiered system or variable pricing. Energy reduction is conservation and energy efficiency. Examples, turn down the thermostat, walk or bike, use a laptop instead of a desktop. Examples on efficiency, use highly efficient light bulbs, get a hybrid, and maybe we could also do um, Energy Star appliances. And then we can use design. So orient your house in the right way, use passive heating and thermal inertia. So those are all ways that we can reduce um, energy, and that's the best form of energy there is. And I hope that was helpful.